Tonight, the Abilene Taylor County Public Health District is preparing for another COVID vaccination clinic taking place this Friday, but they're still trying to fill spots. Just yesterday, they called 700 people to set up their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine, but only 300 people answered. The district is asking people to do what experts have always preached against. You've been told not to answer an incoming call from an unknown number or one identified as spam risk. But now the Abilene Taylor County Health District is telling people on the wait list for a COVID vaccine to do the opposite. If you have signed up, we need you to, to remember that the call may come from a number that either says it's a private call, um, that it may be blocked, um, it may say no caller ID, it may look like a cell phone number. Um, it may be a 325-437 number. A lot of our phone extensions at the public health district um, are gonna show up as a 437 number. So, um, and then there's some who are reporting that it is labeled spam risk. Paul Daniel doesn't think this method is safe or smart. It just goes against the grain of, of common sense to me and uh, 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 it's just not the right way to handle it. We had a lot of viewers reach out to us and they're scared. They're told don't answer an unknown number. Don't answer something that says spam risk. Don't answer a number that you just don't know. Is there a way that the Abilene Taylor County Health District can say that it's you calling rather than play a guessing game? What we're telling everybody right now is you need to answer it if you've got your name on the waiting list. Um, certainly, if it sounds suspicious or anything, if they're trying to ask you for money or any personal information, um, hang up. It's not us. According to the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, phone scams are the most common scams used to target the elderly, a population who's already been through enough during this pandemic. I, I counted eight by looking up on the old bits uh, of people that were either customers of mine over the years or employees or close friends that I've lost. So what is the health district planning to do to fix the issue? We are working to resolve that by implementing a new electronic system. And I know it can't happen fast enough for everybody else. We're certainly very anxious to get it because it will make our work much more efficient. Until then, we all have to just hang on tight and do the best we can with what we've got right now. Do you think that with this new system that you guys are trying to implement that you'll get more people on the waiting list scheduled because they won't be as apprehensive to answer the phone from you guys? That's what our hope is. But again, it's an electronic system that um, some of the elderly people may have trouble navigating as well. And so I'm sure there will be challenges with that. Um, but, you know, we'll we'll try to troubleshoot those things when if and when they come up. Um, but for right now, this is the best we've got. Although scared, Paul says he will continue to answer every phone call he receives, even if he's uncertain who's on the other end of the line. But there are two things he is certain about. Nothing certain other than other than taxes and, and death and I'm going to pay my taxes, but I'm not quite ready yet on the other end. It, that's to be determined. So I'm going to do the best I can to survive a little longer. It was so great meeting Paul today. He tells us that he hasn't received his call just yet. The health department tells us there are currently 17,000 people on the wait list. So far, more than 8,300 doses have been administered.